What do you say, everybody, and welcome to Bama Insider in the Bama Insider YouTube channel. I'm Mick Gillespie hanging out with you on a Sunday night, and we're going to take some calls. Phone lines are open, 205-850-0883. Really, what do you want to get into tonight? I know you're going to probably want to talk about Alabama's quarterback situation, new offensive coordinator, Bill O'Brien. Who's it going to be, Paul Tyson? Is it going to be Bryce Young? You know, could someone else step in? You know, they're going to be any transfers. I, I don't know. I'm guessing it's going to be between those two guys to lead this national championship offense. It's going to be a new look offense because you're going to have, you know, none of the four fantastic receivers that Alabama had a year ago. Uh, no Devontae Smith, no Jalen Waddell. So it's going to have to be some other guys. The offensive line, which was the best that Alabama's ever had, in my opinion, is uh, going to be missing some key contributors. Those guys are going to the NFL. So you're talking about a lot of, uh, of new parts. Who's going to be that quarterback that's going to lead the Crimson Tide? And, you know, this team's still going to have the high expectations. I mean, everyone's still expecting that Alabama's going to be the wrecking ball that they were this year. But, uh, you know, to think that they're going to go into next season, starting off with Miami and Atlanta, and just steamroll everyone, well, you know, that's that's uh, something that we'll have to find out. The defense should be even better next year, but this is an offensive-driven uh, football league now in the SEC and in college football. Phone number is 205-850-0883. You want to talk about basketball. The men's basketball team is on the verge of winning their first SEC championship since 2002, which really is phenomenal. Uh, just to think that it's been that long. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of surprised because uh, I was there. I was there when Alabama beat Florida. Antoine Petway had the layup 2002, not thinking that it was going to take this long for Alabama. Brian Passink, who is uh, the great color analyst on the Alabama radio broadcast, always reminds us that Alabama has the second best college football history and tradition of any team in SEC basketball. And it's been that long, 2002, since Alabama won their last championship. But they're right on the verge of doing that. They scored 115 points against Georgia Saturday. You know, that's like an SEC record for Alabama. Um, you know, they've, they've been had Petway bombing away on those guys. I'm excuse me, Pet Petty bombing away with his coach Petway watching. So without a star, and this is this is my bone of contention with this basketball team, without a star on this basketball team, are they gonna be able to make a real run in the NCAA tournament? It's a big question right now. So, look, what they've done in conference has been phenomenal. They lost one game so far. They're like 11 and 1. Uh, out of conference, though, they're, they're just about a 500 team. You know, they're the game over 500. And you get into the tournament, it's not going to be SEC teams. So, first things first, this team on the verge, they've uh, like a three and a half game lead. They've got four games left to play. They're going to wrap this thing up soon. And congratulations. It is a big deal to win the SEC. And it hasn't happened for Alabama in a long, long time. But they're going to end that really soon. Again, the phone number is 205-850-0883. And uh, we're going to talk about this, this Alabama football team. You know, what an what a incredible run. It was for the Crimson Tide to, um, you know, to, to win the national championship. And I mean, I haven't talked to you guys since, uh, I guess, the championship game, like maybe the, 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 the Sunday before the championship game. It's, a, it's even kind of hard to remember right now. But Alabama uh, took care of business against Ohio State. And, you know, you're talking about a team now. That is, to me, that team last year could be the best team Alabama's ever had. You know, so I'm kind of curious to know, you know, what things are going to look like next year. But let me go to the phones and uh, we're going to take your calls on the show tonight. That's what it's all about. So as long as you guys are calm, we're going to be on on a Sunday night talking a little bit of Alabama football. Hey, how's it going and where are you calling from? Hold on one second, Jarek. Let me get you fixed up here, man. I got I got something messed up, but you are going to be on here. And uh, let's see. There we go. 
Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. There you go. All right, now everybody can hear you too. What's up, Jarek? How you been? I'm doing all right, man. Listen, I'm enjoying the off season, man. Really trying to look forward to uh, 2022. Look at recruiting, uh, watching a lot of Alabama basketball. Very, very impressed with uh, with, with how Nate Oates is doing. Uh, you know, I, you know, I, I I went to you, you know, I went to UB, so I know what Nate Oates is all about. Uh, I know the development. Um, I know the process that he that he has with these kids. And, uh, you know, he took UB and he made him a juggernaut, man. He made a lot of those kids that were no-star guys, a lot, a lot of unknown guys, community college guys, uh, very, very small guys, and he turned them into monsters, man. And so, uh, very, so I'm very happy that the process is now starting to work out, especially with a more talented group. And I think that it's going to continue to move on forward with recruiting and, and here and out. You know, when they, when they hired Nate Oates, I mean, I, I kind of was in the camp where um, – you know, I, I liked, uh, you know, AJ coaching. I thought he was doing a decent job. And I'm kind of like, okay, you know, who's what's this Nate Oates all about? And I got to tell you, like, he's really been impressive. I mean, just like you said at Buffalo, he was great. And, I mean, to think that the, the way that Alabama steamrolled the SEC, it, it really is phenomenal to me. Yeah, you know, the one thing that made Nate Oates, uh, really, really good at UB was number one. He brought he brought that he brought that focus. He brought, he brought that attention to detail uh, to Al, to to Alabama. I mean at UB uh, again, just he brought in kids that had a chip on their shoulder, guys that weren't recruited, and he made them. And you know, again, these guys were 190, 200, and, you know, 200 pounds. I give you a perfect example. A guy named uh, Deomne Harris was came in 180 pounds. But because Nate Oates got the strength and conditioning program, because he, he got the coaches that believed in the same philosophy as he did, he ended up leaving and going to, uh, I think, the G League. But he, he ended up leaving at 250 pounds and ended up being the anchor of the UB basketball team. And, you know, again, the team went to three out of five tournaments. UB only had been to two prior to when Nate Oates even got there. So when I first heard that he got hired, I knew that he was going to bring in – first of all, he was going to bring in the strength and conditioning. He was going to change Alabama's strength and conditioning program as far as the basketball as far as basketball goes, and really making these kids a lot stronger, uh, a lot mentally more mentally more aware. Make these kids have a chip on their shoulder because again, you know these kids they they should have a chip on their shoulder uh, compared to the last couple you know ever since um you know the, that their last tournament appearance which was which was back in I believe 2017. Um, so we're seeing it now. We're seeing we're seeing leadership. Uh, we're seeing, you know, great perimeter defense. We're seeing interior defense. We're seeing three. We're seeing improved three point shooting, which was Nate Oates. That's one of the first things I think he said was that we were going to be a much more improved perimeter shooting team. And you're now starting to see all those things, uh, if not uh, a more Nick Saban like mentality from Nate Oates on this basketball team. Yeah, I mean, like y y you watch them play, and when they get to where they're shooting the basketball. Uh, they play pretty good defense too. I, my biggest thing with them, and, and when they shoot the ball, they're tough to beat. I just, mm -hmm. I, I don't look at this team and see that superstar player that I feel like you need to have to make a run in the tournament and win a national championship. You know, I know they have a lot of very good players that are doing well and, and that there's, you know, different guys that can score. You know, obviously Petty's been great. You know, and, and but I don't know. I mean, do you see someone on that team and you're like, you know what, this is the star of the team? Or are you like me? And it's kind of like a lot of good players, but not that one step out guy. Yeah, I see. I see a lot of good players. I mean, I like I like what Jones. I think Jones is the guy that he's, I, you know, him and Petty are more like the leaders of the team. I'm just just watching them. I can tell that these guys kind of demand that their teammates kind of follow them. Um, but you know, look at the look at the last national champion. Uh, what, what, Virginia won the national title. They never even had a star in the team. They had a bunch of good players and role players, but they never really had a star. They ended up winning the, the national championship, and before, of course, all this COVID stuff had it happened. So you know, you know, definitely having a superstar helps on your on your team. But if you look at the last three national champions, besides maybe North Carolina, um, there really wasn't a superstar on their team. So you don't. I don't think so. When when these when these tournaments happen. Uh, it, it's not like, you know, it's not like, uh, it's not like, um, the NBA where you need like seven games it's one and done. And really it's perimeter shooting. It's, it's, it's perimeter defense really that matters. It's not who, you know, if you're bigger or you're stronger or you're faster, it's, it's more like which, 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 which program comes together, and which team, which team can shoot the ball well, which team can, can defend the perimeter, which team can come together, especially in the hardest moments. 
and rely on leadership. And I feel like this Alabama team does have it. I feel like they have. I feel like they have all the elements for this team to be really, really good in the tournament. What were you doing back in 2002, the last time Alabama won an SEC championship? Oh, well, I was in daycare. I was four <laughs> years old. <laughs> That's crazy, isn't I was, it? Yeah, I was, I was, I was four years. Yeah, it, 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 I, I never – I thought it was like uh, maybe a five or six, but I'm, that's 2000. That's insane. That's crazy. Yeah, they made a run in the tournament, um, not as SEC champs, but they, they made a run in 2006. I think it was 2006, might have been 2004, but uh, but they won their last SEC championship in 2002, and it really goes to show how tough it is to win those championships. Oh, ab- absolutely, man. The SEC is no joke, man. Uh, you know, whether it's football or basketball, they're no joke. There's a bunch of really, really good teams, and again, I'm I'm, I'm taking a look at the I looked at the recruiting class uh, rankings, and it's like wow, these it's like Kentucky. Well, Kentucky is Kentucky, and it's surprising to see them kind of fall off the ship while they still have they still had the number one recruiting class in, all, in, in the nation. And you look at what, uh, what Florida has done, you look at what Tennessee has done. They're, Tennessee is always a ju- – well, we all know they're not in football. But in basketball, they're always a juggernaut. Uh, you know, Georgia has, has had some pretty good recruiting classes. And to really see this Alabama basketball team, you know, just kind of just arise and really just kind of dominate this conference, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's really amazing to me. And, and, again, you know, in a way, they're kind of – on their way to maybe being a Clemson type of team, you know, as far as not really having a lot of superstars in their team, um, not really having the highest profile players, but finding a way, relying on leadership, getting, you know, fourth, fifth year guys back, relying on leadership uh, to kind of carry them on their way as they're on their way to building up a national, uh, to a, a national championship roster in the future. They already got a five-star committed and I feel like uh, more recruits, can you know more recruits will see the dominance that Alabama is displaying, and who knows? I, again, you know, next year or the year after that, Bama could be a really could be a juggernaut for years to come in basketball. Yeah, I think a couple of things that they have to do to make the basketball program more legitimate. It starts with the arena. Um, it's yeah. it's not good enough. It, it's it's really it feels like it was built for gymnastics, not for basketball. It's old. Um, it just doesn't have compared to Tennessee and Arkansas and even Auburn's new arena, uh, the bells and whistles. It doesn't have, you know, suites to go sit in. It doesn't have modern amenities. And if you really want to have a basketball program that is legit on the men's side, you're going to need those things. And I know that there's been a lot of talk about possibly seizing the momentum of the success that this basketball uh, team's having right now to build into it. You know, COVID definitely stopped the process. Um, But, I mean, me personally, I I wish they would just blow that building up and start over again. Uh, But with Nate Oates there, you know, maybe that's a a way to keep him around because I think a lot of Alabama fans quietly are saying, how long is this guy going to stay in Tuscaloosa? Because, look, Alabama's a football school first. We know that. Uh, But it it feels like Alabama finally has a, a coach who could really make things interesting. Well, yeah, and, and, and another thing is, too, you, you know, Nate Oates, he's used to maybe he's just comfortable with Alabama, with the Alabama building. I mean, UB's, I mean, at UB's building, I mean, it's, it's old. It's, it's, it's really, really, really old in UB Stam. I think it is. So I think Nate Oates, he's definitely, he doesn't really care about what, what the environment it is. I, I know the one thing that he's probably building a lot of these recruits' heads and even his own players' heads, that doesn't matter really where we play. Uh, you know, you know, at the end of the day, we, we got to come in here and we have to do our own thing. Again, the only way for us to improve uh, as far as, you know, making Alabama basketball a lot better is what we do on the court. Um, so I know, so, you know, again, Nate Oates, he doesn't really come from anything flashy. I think that's the one thing I think a lot of Alabama fans, it's just a lot of bas- college basketball fans in general kind of always loved about Nate Oates or kind of generate to is the fact that he's all about the process. And, you know, what, what, you know, what has Nick Saban done at Alabama? He's, he's, He's tried to uh, get these get these kids into their heads. Trust the process. Uh, Nate Oates is all about the process. He's all about hard work. He's all about leadership. He's all about really getting these kids to be better on and off the court. And you know, again, you know, watching a team like Kentucky that has the flashy, you know, they have the, I mean, you know, they got the flashy basketball arena. They got the one of the best basketball facilities you're ever going to see on, on the planet of Earth. And to see them struggling with, with when they had the top recruiting class in the nation for the last four years, I think that just goes to show you right there that 
Uh, it, it really is what you do on and off the court, not about the flashiness of, of your arena and, and, and the facilities. I want to thank Tobias for the super chat. And uh, basically he says, I think all programs have to invest in recruiting. If Bama can get basketball, women's basketball and baseball track on point, it'll be it'll help for a well-rounded athletic department. I agree. You know, one, one of the things that drives yeah. me nuts is watching this women's basketball team that hasn't made a tournament uh, since I think 1999 or 2000, just kind of sneak through and no Ooh. one really holding them accountable, you know? And I, I think that, that a new coach probably be in line. I mean, look at what we're seeing with, with the men's basketball program. I mean, things aren't even close to being as in bad uh, shape as women's. I know they're having a, a, you know, kind of a decent season this year, but they'll probably miss the tournament again. And, uh, you know, the, the, you know, the men's programs held to a high standard. Um, you know, I thought, uh, Anthony Johnson was a good coach. I'm mean, excuse me. Avery Johnson was a good coach. I really liked yeah. him, and but but he wasn't good enough, you know, because obviously there's a high standard, and I'd love to see women's basketball have a high standard. I'd love to see them think outside of the box and go get someone young and energetic that that could bring in a lot of energy. Baseball seems to be on track. Um, you know, they, they've had to build from the ground up. They got a new stadium over there. I don't know anything about track, but I agree with this. And, you know, I'd love to know what you think, too. I, I think at, at a university like Alabama, where the football program's bringing in millions and millions of dollars, you have the money to invest in the other programs. And it really is great and exciting to see this basketball team be good and be a top 10 team, you know, compared to where football is always a top program, one of the top one or two every single season, you know, a, a bad year for Alabama football would be 11. Um, but at the same time, it, it also helps you with recruiting. I mean, look at Kool-Aid, you know, he, he kind of wants to play basketball. There's some other guys that are out there, some top blue chip guys who want to do both. And when you have a decent basketball program, maybe it helps out with football too. Yeah, and, and and I actually read up a story that uh, Terry and Arnold and well, you, you mentioned uh, Quincy, but yeah, Terry and Arnold. You know, one of the biggest reasons why he committed to Alabama was because of basketball, and because you know how he saw. You know, he's looking at what Nate Oates is doing with the program, and again, a lot of those guys there, they're not they're not blue chip guys. They're not five star guys. I mean, Josh Primo is the only is the closest one to being a well. You can say you can consider him a blue chip guy. Uh, Josh Primo is a phenomenal is a phenomenal player, but you know, again, Terry and Arnold. You know, you can make an argument. He committed to Alabama, and the major reason why was because of basketball. So, you know, I do agree with you is that we need to, you know, Bama, Alabama needs to start investing more in these sports programs. They need to get coaches that uh, have a process which they can kind of believe in. I'm not saying, you know, get a Nick Saban guy, even though Nick's, you know, getting a Nick Saban in every sport would definitely be uh, a huge help to your program. But programs, they're looking for a place to kind of develop them for the next level, right? They're, you know, you, know you, you, you talked about track and field. A lot of these kids, you know, even though it's for the most part, it's, it's, I don't know, it, it's like a hybrid. It's more of a, it's a team sport, but at the same time, it's more individually because even though you're winning, you're, you're, the goal at the end of the day is to, is to be competing for world championships and, and, and to go to the Olympics. And they're looking for play and they're looking for coaches. And, 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 and this is where the athletic facilities, you can kind of say that, yeah, having more of these athletic facilities uh, is definitely going to be more, is definitely going to uh, help with recruiting. Because again, they're looking for a place where they can, you know, develop and get to that next level, get to the Olympics, right? Wrestling, swimming, you know, all the all the sports programs, baseball wise, they're, they're looking to get drafted and go to the major leagues. You know, why not go to LSU where they have a phenomenal baseball program? Mm -hmm. Why not go to, you know, uh, 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 Georgia, which has a great track and field program? Like, why not go to any of those other schools where they have all these athletic facilities? better athletic facilities, which would develop them for the next level. That's something that Alabama has to get to. And, it, and, it, and it, you know, basketball, they're on the right track. I feel like with Nate Oates there, uh, they can definitely be there, you know, be, be right there right now. You know, I, I took a look. There's some five-star guys that are heavily interested in going to the University of Alabama for basketball. And, and, you know, you never would have thought of that before. You only think, well, it's just, it's football. You know, if you're going to go to Alabama, you're just going to go there for football. You know, the goal at the end of the day is to make, is to make Alabama one of the best uh, athletic uh, universities in the world, and uh, they, I think they're definitely on the right track for now, but they definitely have a long way to go in order for them to, to reach it. We're talking Alabama sports tonight, a little bit of basketball, 205-850-0883 on a Sunday night. 
appreciate all you guys hanging out. Let's switch gears a little bit while I got you on because I know you you love the football program too. Um, Alabama's got a tough decision to make as far as the next quarterback. And this guy right there, Nick Saban, um, who I feel like kind of transitioning over is one of the reasons why the athletic department as a whole is improving because of the standard that he has, you know, kind of laid for everyone there, you know, like, look, no no one's doing better Mm -hmm. than him. And that's financially and success on the field. He's won more championships. And I know, from you know other coaches that are in different programs that he goes out of his way to help recruit for any of the programs you know if, so, if he can if, if a coach wants to bring a player by and say hey you know what I'm here for basketball but here's uh just so happened to be coach Saban's office you know if that's going to help out he goes out of his way um, he's been just a great ambassador for Alabama but he's got a tough decision to make and I'm, this is the last thing I'm going to talk to you about before we get to the next call. This quarterback mm-hmm. battle is going to be as interesting as I can remember. I mean, I guess I'm thinking Bryce Young is the odds-on favorite. Paul Tyson's good. Jalen Milrose could have a say in this. Your thoughts on Bill O'Brien's offense and who's going to be the next quarterback? Well, I, I, I'm just going to say this, man. You got three juggernauts that you can play with, man. I mean, you got Bryce Young, who's more of that, who's more of a blue chip five-star athlete. Uh, a guy that has phenomenal talent, probably even better talent than Tua as far as as far as the zip on his touches. He has the mobility. Uh, as far as you know, the, the 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 development in his game, he's probably more advanced than a lot of the, a lot of guys in college football last year. The true freshman. You're talking about a kid that went to modern day high school, uh, that went from one of the best um, high school offense you know offensive programs you're ever going to see in in, in any sport. And competing against top-notch competition like IMG and St. Francis Academy and St. John Bosco, you know. So of course, a lot of people had a lot of expectations for Bryce Young. A lot of people thought he was going to be the starting quarterback over Mac Jones. And you know, unfortunately, that just wasn't the case. But in a lot of people kind of rode off the bandwagon a little bit of Bryce Young. But you know, we gotta we gotta we gotta uh, put this into into consideration that he he you know he was supposed to, you know he was the guy that enrolled early. But with the entire thing with COVID came, I mean, you can make an argument it kind of stopped his development and being under this offense. Uh, Mac Jones was a guy that was very experienced under the Steve Sarkeesian offense. He's been around here for a very, very long time. So, you know, I feel like we got to take that into consideration. So, you know, obviously with, with Bill O'Brien, he's a phenomenal offensive mind. I mean, he is, you know, a lot of people kind of write him off because of what he did with the Texans and what he was managing. But people, I mean, as a head coach, he's a very good head coach. Very good head coach. I'm actually shocked that no one kind of offered him a college a, a college job. You know what he did at Penn State, what he did with Christian Hackenberg, and when he left the next year, and, and to watch kind of Christian Hackenberg fall off without Bill O'Brien, I think that should tell you right there how good of a head coach and how he can develop quarterbacks is. I mean, look what he did with Deshaun Watson yep. and you know, Christian Hackenberg, and, and 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 what he worked with with Tom Brady when he was in New England and when he was at the, when he was with Belichick. So this is a guy that understands. What he's gonna, he understands what the quarterback strengths and weaknesses are. You know, you know, look at you know Paul Tyson's a guy that has a very, very strong arm, six five, two hundred and thirty pound guy. Again, extremely strong arm, very accurate. Uh, again, more of a Mac Jones prototypical, uh, prototypical pro style quarterback. Jalen Murrow is more of a dual threat type of guy. I think he's a little bit more raw, but a guy with a, a ton of upside left to him. So Bill O'Brien, he has a lot of talent. He has a lot of juggernauts that he can work with under this offense. I personally think that maybe Bryce Young is going to win it only because I think that out of all the quarterbacks so far, he's the most, he's the more advanced quarterback out of anybody so far in his offense. And I think being around here for being around here for about a year, I think, you know, with, with him being there and really getting to know the guys and, you know, and, and a lot of the guys that he's going to be throwing to in the spring, these are, you know, these were second, third string guys that he worked with. So I feel like Bryce Young is probably the more guy. And, and plus, it's probably going to be more of a, of a West Coast-style offense, more, you know, add some pro-style concepts into your offense, more of what Bryce Young kind of worked with Sarkeesian last year. I don't think that uh, he's going to, you know, Bill O'Brien's going to rip it, rip the offense completely apart. He's going to know the strengths and the weaknesses of this offense really, really quickly. Um, but, yeah, I, I think that Bill O'Brien, no matter who the quarterback is, um, it, it's, I think they're going to excel under this offense. I think Bill, what, what Bill O'Brien works with, it, it is a quarterback-friendly offense at the end of the day. Thanks, Jarek. Awesome call, man. Roll Tide. Oh, Roll Tide, brother. They don't get any better than that right there. What a way to get the show going uh, as we uh, go back to the phone lines. Talking to Alabama and, you know, 
maybe you want to talk basketball. Maybe you want to talk football. We'll do it tonight. Who's this and where are you calling from? Hey, how's it going? This is uh, Christian. I'm calling from Florida. How are you doing tonight? What's up, man? How you doing? Uh, I'm doing pretty well. I've called up a couple times. I haven't uh, really called in the call-in show in a while. Uh, I will say I'm very happy about the national championship we just won. Uh, I love what Coach Saban had said on the podium that night. He said, this is the ultimate team, and I would fully agree. I mean, you look at everything they had. But Mac Jones and Najee and Devontae and everything, I mean, it was loaded all the way around. Um, I think we take a step back this year. Um, I like Bryce Young uh, to be the start. Like Devontae losing Waddle and Najee. I mean, they got guys that are going to be great and maybe – close to I don't, I don't think it's going to be as great but probably pretty close but we'll just have to wait and see uh, I wanted to get your thoughts though um, I, I really don't have Alabama as next year's title favorite and if anybody else out there you know agrees with me I'm sure we all understand I mean it's very hard to repeat and with everything they're losing um, but I like a team like Georgia next year uh, what do you think about JT Daniels over there in Athens you know, I watched JT Daniels, and when Alabama played, I, I did not feel like uh, uh, Stetson Bennett was going to be able to beat Alabama, and and he wasn't. It, he just didn't have the deep down the, the the pass. The offense reminded me of Alabama before Lane Kiffin right. got there and and switched him up. You know, I kept saying that they reminded me of old Alabama. You know. Um, they had the good defense, and then they had this offense that, that, you know, once they fell behind, they were like a turtle on their back. They couldn't, they couldn't get back to their feet. Uh, but I watched the bowl game, and you know, Daniel won the game. Obviously, he can throw the ball some, but I wasn't overly impressed with him either. I mean, as a matter of fact, I was kind of yelling at the TV like, "Hey, Brit, give Bennett a chance." <laughs> Georgia went out and got two five-star quarterbacks. And I'm curious to see what happens with with Daniels, you know, what happens with these two guys, you know, is someone able to yeah. step in and, and kind of be the next guy there? Uh, I also think that Georgia learned a lesson, the same lesson that Alabama learned, and that's that you, you, you really have to have – uh, a, a, an offense that can score points, you know, like it's got, it's got to be yeah. r almost pass first run second. You got to be able to score and you got to be able to score a lot or you're not going to keep up with teams like Alabama and Clemson <laughs> and right. Florida and all that. But, but I agree. I mean, look, no one, even Alabama, no one has out recruited Georgia over the last five recruiting classes, you know, and it's crazy to think because Alabama's had some great classes. I mean, including this year, which, um, you know, statistically right. is the greatest one ever. But Georgia had that run there where I, I was curious to see how Nick Saban was going to bounce back recruiting wise because Georgia was getting yeah. the better of Alabama talent speaking. Uh, Georgia, eventually, I feel like they're going to win one. I just feel like they're going to win one. And the only reason that they didn't and they haven't has been Nick Saban in Alabama. They've been a nemesis. You know, they 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 might have won the year that they lost to Alabama in the SEC championship. And they would have won the national championship had Tua not stunned them in 2017, right? Right. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I. I think that uh, Kirby Smart is a really good coach. Uh, then again, I mean, where did he come from? <laughs> he, right here from Alabama. I mean, but, you know, I think the talent's been there. I really think they got a guy now at quarterback, which I think has been the big problem for Georgia is quarterback play. I feel like they finally got that with JT Daniels. And here's the thing about Alabama real quick. I, I love Georgia. I just think they got so much talent. They got defense down. They finally got it figured out. Their first test is week one against Clemson. As we know in college football, it is very hard to repeat as a national champion. Bama did it one time. I think it was 11 and 12. We went back to back. Um, and sure, I have a lot of faith in Bryce Young. I think we get Mechie back next year on the offense. We had a lot of young guys last year on the defense that come back with great experience. Um, keep your eye on a guy maybe like Malachi Moore. I think we have the talent 
But at the same time, I I just have a feeling like it's going to take a step back because last year was so great. It'll probably be hard to top. That's really all I got for Alabama. And if there is anybody, I think in the SEC to watch out for is, I don't know, maybe we get to Atlanta and win the West. Watch out for Georgia in the SEC title game, I guess. Well, I mean, and look, the, the schedule, and we we all on Bama Insider had this big debate over the schedule, you know, like where you're like, well, is this an easy or a hard schedule? I feel like it's a hard schedule. you got to play Miami and Atlanta <laughs> yeah. with this brand-new offense, oh, all these new coordinators. Miami's not, you know, not going to be a pushover. <laughs> uh, they have talent as well. Then you got to play at Texas A&M. you got to play – uh, what was the other one? You got to play at Florida before that, and then you got to play um, Auburn and LSU. I mean, those are tough games, you know. And then, and then yeah. Ole Miss is going to give Alabama a hard time. Ole Miss, as long as Lane Kiffin there, is going to be a tough. They game. probably should have beat us last year. Honestly, they probably should have beat us uh, with us giving up forty-eight to them. I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I mean that they was, almost did. It, that was a game where you're watching and you're like, okay. Um, something's got to give here. Right. And, and, yeah. and eventually Lane Kiffin knew Nick Saban and the way that Alabama plays defense uh, as well as I've ever seen any play a team in college prepare for someone else. You know, Alabama just physically is, was better than Ole Miss. Ole Miss was just oh, yeah. prepared for Alabama. They knew all the plays and had the answer for everything. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, so, yeah, I mean, it was sixty-three forty-eight, and sure, we probably won the game by seventeen points, or I don't know, do the math, whatever it was. And I mean, but and there were some points of that game. I looked at it because that all of last season, and they've only had one other undefeated champion, and that was oh nine. We say the dynasty started back then. Um, I said, I want one more undefeated season before Saban gets out of here. I know he's got a few years left on his contract, blah, blah, blah. But I want it to be this year. And I looked at that game, and it was kind of close at some point. But I said, Ole Miss is not something to joke around about. Yeah. <laughs> Bam, we've got to step it up. And they kind of did towards the end of the game. I think they pulled away offensively. The defense kind of got clicking a little bit. But, you know, overall, I mean, that – there, there's some teams to look out for next year, especially Georgia, Ole Miss. I, obviously, I guess Lane Kiffin's doing something. He's not on the level of getting the team ranked, but definitely competing in the SEC. Um, so, I mean, Alabama's the defending champs next year, but their schedule's not all – I mean, they got some cupcake teams. Maybe we're overlooking Miami or maybe not. I don't know. But if they want, if Bama wants to repeat, when it, when it comes time to play SEC teams, you got to bring everything you got. So anyway, I appreciate you uh, taking my call tonight, man. Uh, love Alabama. Love the show. Have a good one. Roll Tide. Hey, Roll Tide. Thanks for calling in. Getting a uh, little call in from Florida. You want to talk? I'm going to talk as long as you guys want to hang out and uh, get into this Alabama Crimson Tide. 205-850-0883. 205-850-0883. Taking your calls now. Um, you know, the quarterback topic, it's it's a big one. And who's going to be the next quarterback at Alabama? I'm guessing Bryce Young's going to have a really good shot to win the job. Paul Tyson, unlike Bryce Young, more of a drop back, power armed guy. Hey, it worked this year with Mac. Um, you know, you, you got um, Jalen Milrow, who's a, a guy who comes in and he's a dual threat guy. He's got a great arm. What, what you really want to see is heavy competition at that quarterback spot. You want these guys to come in, feel comfortable, and be able to not not one guy gets the job because, hey, you know, everyone else isn't good. You want them to win the job because they're the best and everyone is good. And that was the situation that we just came off of with Jalen Hurts and, and Tua and Mac. So it's going to be interesting to see what the, the legacy is going to be for these quarterbacks. Hey, uh, thanks for calling in. Where are you calling from and who is this? Hey, you there? 
Well, lost whoever that was. Lost them. Call back in 205-850-0883 as we talk Alabama. You know, today is the 20th anniversary of, you know, it's kind of switching gears for a second, but uh, the 20th anniversary of the uh, Dana, Daytona 500 where Dale Earnhardt died uh, racing. And the reason I bring that up is because I'll never forget that. I was a student at Alabama, and I was broadcasting for that race uh, in the in the old uh, Sewell Thomas Stadium uh, press box. I was doing games on the uh, University College Station, broadcasting baseball, but we had the game on the monitor in the booth, and I can remember watching as um, as that wreck happened and, and kind of like thinking like – that one looked pretty bad, you know. It's just hard to believe that that's been 20 years since uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. died. So they're they're running um, that race today. They've dealt with a lot of rain issues at, at uh, Daytona, um, but um, you know, just I just thought of that, and I, I just remember that whole situation and, and how tough that was around the country. 205-850-0883. You guys want to talk quarterbacks. You want to get into this Alabama basketball team. Uh, I'm, I'm becoming a believer in the basketball team. The thing that worries me, though, is that, that when they play these non-conference games, they, they're, they're a 5-4 and four team. They're barely over 500. But the way that they're running through – the SEC right now really is phenomenal. And I mean, what a great hire to go out and get Nate Oates from Buffalo, the way that he's come in and brought a whole lot of energy. And honestly, look, you know, and kind of going back to, um, you know, our conversation earlier about the other sporting teams at Alabama and, you know, kind of holding those programs accountable. You know, I'm, I'm one of the, the few people that really likes the women's basketball. Uh, well, I like watching it. I like, I like watching it. I, I got a chance to meet Pat Summit when she was at Tennessee, you know, and for women's basketball, she was like Nick Saban and, uh, you know, and, and paying attention to what South Carolina and, and Mississippi State are doing and to see Alabama, you know, with without an SEC, uh, excuse me, without a, a well, not only not an SEC champion, but not even making the NCAA tournament this entire decade and last decade too. you know, there, there comes a point where it's like, you know, you want to see those programs held the, to the same account that everyone else is, is held to. So I love it when you you see this basketball team, the men's side winning, and um, you know, and and the the pride that everyone takes. I mean, it's so much fun to be able to fill out your bracket and Alabama be in there. I think that's the biggest part of that uh, to to all of us. And right now, I mean, they're saying that Alabama basketball could possibly be a two seed, which would be just incredible. I mean, can you imagine, you know, you fill out your bracket and, and Alabama be a two seed, you get a good, um, a good draw in the tournament and, and make a, a serious run. You know, the other, the other thing about the, the basketball program, that's pretty funny to me is that Alabama and Auburn, since I went to school at Alabama, historically not very good. I mean, you know, okay, but but nothing really to write home about. And now Alabama had their run, you know, and they, they won the SEC in 02, you know, and I think it was 04, they got to the the Elite Eight. And then since then, they really haven't done anything, you know, like they've they've made some tournaments. Um, you know, they're not great in the tournament, but once in a while they make it. Auburn, you know, hasn't really been that good. And then all of a sudden they get Bruce Pearl and they make a run. And I mean, they they got to the final four and they were a steamroller. I mean, they could have won it all uh, besides a bad break. And what happens in our state is that if one program gets good, the other one's got to go out and get good because you can't let Auburn just take all the the have all the fun in basketball and take all the headlines. So you know, there's a there's a part of this. It, it goes back to. Uh, thinking about what life was like when Auburn was beating Alabama before Nick Saban, and 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 uh, you know Senator Tuberville, who was the coach at Auburn at the time, had this five-game winning streak, and Mal Moore went out and just it wasn't going to have it, you know, and and went out and got Nick Saban, and a, a lot of the reasons that Alabama went out and did that and went out and got uh, uh, Coach Saban was 
you know, not that people didn't like Mike Shula. People loved Mike Shula. He's a great guy, quarterbacked at Alabama, did everything the right way, but just didn't win at the level, didn't beat Auburn, didn't win at the level that it really takes to be successful and win championships, which is what Alabama fans really want to see, you know. And and I've always felt like Mal Moore doesn't go out and put the all-out press to get Nick Saban had Alabama failed to uh, to beat Auburn in those games, you know. So well, every time I see like the five and the six, you know, uh, that 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 Tuberville was doing when he was coach before Alabama uh, hammered him um, to end that streak, you know, I think about the the level of competition that that this state and Alabama has when it comes to athletics, and it goes the other way too. You know, Auburn they keep firing their football coaches who I thought Gus Malzahn was a decent coach, right? But he wasn't able to consistently win at the level that Nick Saban in Alabama won at, even though he had some success against Alabama and, uh, you know, didn't stick around long. Gene Chizik won a national championship. He didn't stick around long, you know, like they're going to move people out and, and, and try to find someone that can beat, Nick Saban. And so far, no one's been able to do that. So it's not like there's some magic bullet out there. But I give Auburn a, you know, a lot of credit for pushing Alabama to go out and get Nate, Nate Oates because it has been really exciting watching this Alabama basketball program near winning their first SEC championship in a long way and in a long time. And I don't feel like they might have you know been uh, as – as apt to go out and and get rid of a, a good guy and Avery Johnson, who was doing a decent job, you know, uh, coaching Alabama to go get Nate Oates, who obviously is doing better. And he's kind of been able to take the baton and run forward with it. So, you know, that part of it is, um, you know, it has been exciting. All right, let me go to the comments. Um, is Auburn's coach any good? I, look, I don't know about the new guy. Now, I know, like, I, I thought that the Auburn coaching hire was bizarre. You know, it almost felt like they thought that they were going to get someone else, you know, uh, Mario Cristobal or, you know, someone else that was that was out there um, when they got rid of Gus. And the, the hire that they made to me felt more like, uh-oh, we didn't get the guy that we thought we were going to get. Um, we, we're not getting Hugh freeze. We're not getting this guy. We're not getting that guy. You know, he doesn't want the job. And then you start to get into that second level of coaches. And if you're a coach and you got to come into the state, the, the expectations that Auburn fans have and, and boosters have for their program is it, it, it's when you compare it to, you know, to reality, it's, it's, it, it's pretty outrageous because they have been successful and they win big games and they've beaten Georgia and they've beaten Alabama and they've gotten to a title game and they've won the SEC, you know, not, not every year like Nick Saban, but you can't compare anybody to Nick Saban. I mean, there's just only one. I mean, like, you know, that's why the guy's got a statue out in front of the stadium. That's why he's, you know, the, the greatest coach arguably of all time. Um, so when Auburn made that hire, um, I you know, I was kind of surprised by it. Uh, I'm I'm curious to see how it's going to work out for them. You know, it's it, it's one of those hires where it could be great. I mean, maybe this guy comes in. He's young. You know, he's he was at Arkansas State. He was at Boise State. People around here don't know him. He went out and got coaches who have coached in the SEC. Um, the recruiting class. The rankings for them horrible. Uh, you know they're going to have to get some some transfers. I'm guessing. I, I don't know. They had some good players leave. It just feels like, and I hate to say this. I mean, it's going to sound biased, but it just feels like Auburn is kind of setting themselves up for a, a long time of not having much success because, in in the SEC, it is so competitive, right? And you know, you get out of line, and it is tough really tough to get back in line. We saw that with Alabama when they got rid of Gene Stallings and we look at Tennessee right now, you know, you, the, they were doing okay with, um, with uh, coach Fulmer and then they hired Lane Kiffin, but you know, obviously Lane Kiffin wasn't ready. And then, you know, next time you turn around, you know, like the, the they're having like this long sustained failure at Tennessee. And I wonder 
if you know what the situation is going to be like at Auburn, because if if how patient are they going to be if if things don't go well, you know how how you know you have a bad season again next year, you know how are fans going to deal with that? You know are they going to you know what's the rope going to look like? Because they're expecting him to come in and win ten games right off the bat, you know, um, and that's possible. But Ole Miss has gotten better. Texas A&M has gotten better. Alabama's Alabama. That's always going to be a tough game. You got to play Florida. You got to play LSU. Um, you know, so so there's a lot of there's a lot of pitfalls out there. Um, you know, and I don't know. Just just kind of looking at that situation and wondering. You know, was that a good hire? I thought, I guess, just being an Alabama guy, watching Gus Malzahn and and the way that he made our lives miserable a few times, <laughs> not this year, but you know, a few times in the past. Um, I'm kind of glad that Alabama doesn't have to match up with that weird run style offense that they have, the misdirection and all that stuff. I mean, uh, I th- I think that it'll benefit Alabama. Um, here here's one right here. This is a good one. Uh, Greg McElroy was an Alabama quarterback, but his comments come off as salty. Uh, so saying you're an Alabama fan, look, I, I I get it. Like I watch Mac on on TV, and I'm friends with a lot of the guys on the 09 team. And sometimes it does. Like the thing that bothers me the most, it's just as an Alabama guy. And if you guys want to get in on this conversation, two zero five eight five zero zero eight eight three, call in right now. Um, and you know, we'll talk a little Alabama football, get into this quarterback race. Maybe you want to talk about hoops, uh, whatever you want to get into, uh, as we talk on a Sunday night, jump in and, you know, and get in on this conversation. But, um, Greg McElroy, I, I heard through the grapevine that he made a comment that if Colt McCoy wouldn't have gotten hurt, that he felt like Texas would have beaten Alabama in that 09 championship game. And, you know, I just don't know that I agree with that. I, I look at the team, uh, and, I, and I was talking to um, to Mike Johnson, who is was the offensive uh, tackle on that team, right? He was an All American, and um, and and he was he was talking. To, he said that someone called him up to do a, on a talk show, and they said, "Hey, who would win, uh, the Alabama in 09 or Alabama twenty twenty? Right. He was just telling me this. And I said, I said, well, what would you say? And he said, well, what kind of football are we playing? Are we playing 09 where if you if you go across the middle, somebody's going to take your head off or are we playing now or where you've taken a lot of the contact out of the game? And, and he brings up a really good point. I felt like that 09 team was really special. I thought last year's team was really special. All the championship teams, obviously, are, are all just amazingly special when it comes to. Um, you know, the, 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 the history of the program and what they've been able to do. But the 09 team was special because they were the ones that got Alabama back on track again. The administrators, uh, the program, the coaches, you know, everybody messed it up. They had this, this amazing program, everybody messed it up. And then Nick Saban came in and he made these guys like, look, either you're going to buy into what I'm selling or not. I mean, and they never worked harder in their life. And all of a sudden, you know, like he's going out and he's recruiting guys like Julio Jones and Mark Ingram and, you know, Marcel Darius and this guy and that guy, you know, and and, and then mixing them with the guys like Mike Johnson and Greg McElroy who, who were there before, right? And then blending this championship team. Um, you know, those guys worked so hard to win that title and they wanted it so bad. They, they could have won in 08 too, had they believed in themselves, but they, but they didn't, they, but they won in 09. They were really a tight group and they still are, and they're special, you know? And so for me, when I heard Max say that, I thought, you know, um, I, God, I, I don't agree with that because, you know, of all the positions on the field, I think that. His was, and maybe this is why he's saying it. I think that that he was kind of the weakest of the the players. I mean, um, and maybe he knows, like, look, I wouldn't even be on the team right now. And maybe there's some other guys who would say the same thing, like recruiting wise, because like, it's just a you know, it's a, a, a you know, a celebration of rich, you know, when it comes to talent. Now, I mean, you're talking about four and five star guys all over the place. But even though McElroy may may not have been, um, you know, a four or five star guy with a power arm, he was a 
really good quarterback. I mean, like he knew where to put the football and, um, you know, he, 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 you had Mark Ingram, a Heisman trophy winner. You had these offensive line guys, you know, so when you're basically, what I'm saying is you do this job and you get on here and you talk, you know, you want to be fair, but then sometimes, you know, you say stuff and people are like on your side going, man, you're crazy. You guys would have beat them with Colt McCoy or without Colt McCoy. And I mean, you look at, the trajectory of both of those programs. Texas is still trying to find themselves. Uh, McElroy's on ESPN and he's doing great. And, um, you know, and Alabama's winning championships. But you compare it to this year's team. Nick Saban said this. Those guys had the the expectations of being champions that they had to overcome. And I, what I really loved about this year's team uh, with COVID and everything else that's going on, they they wanted to play so bad. They wanted to be out there. They wanted to play. And they not only played great on the field, but those guys did the things that they needed to do not to run into COVID. And that is really tough. I mean, you talk about everything else involved, to be able to avoid COVID, follow the protocol, wear the mask, stay away from people, stay inside, you know, spend time together. Um, I got the picture of of uh, Devonte Smith up there. If there's ever been anyone that represents what we love about Alabama football, that guy is definitely on the top of the list. I mean, just doing all the stuff right and and making the great plays, but also just being humble and hardworking. And that's that's what this season is all about to me. But yeah, and I see you guys in the in the comments talking about some of the other ones. I, I agree with this one, Preston. I'm going to put this up. Alabama wins the national championship over Clemson if Bo Scarborough doesn't break his foot in Tampa. I was at that game. Um, I was in a, a luxury box with Freddie Mitchell, the uh, former uh, receiver from the Eagles, and, and a bunch of guys I didn't really know and, and a guy I grew up with. We were all in there, and we were having a great time. And I thought, you know, Alabama's got this. And Bo Scarborough got hurt, and and it just it took the wind out of the sails, you know. And um, Deshaun Watson did did the rest. And of all the quarterbacks that I ever saw, and and I want to hear from you guys as well. Two zero five eight five zero zero eight eight three. We saw. I saw Tim Tebow. I saw Peyton Manning. You know. Um, I mean, look. If, if you've played college football against Alabama in the last twenty five years, I've seen it. And no one was better than Deshaun Watson. I mean, you talk about just a dude that would play in these big games and make so many good passes, and Alabama would answer. I mean, those games were epic. Those games were epic, and I I tell you, I I still have a lot of respect for Clemson, Dabo Sweeney, and Deshaun Watson, man. Jeez, he was so good in that game. But if Bo Scarborough doesn't get hurt – Alabama wins that championship. They just didn't have the guy who could have came in and ran the football uh, like he was. I mean, they had a 14-point lead, right, when he got hurt and, and they weren't able to hold on. But that that would have been a great and, – and I felt bad for that team because they did it the right way and, and it just didn't work out for them. And that's the tough part about winning a championship too. You know, it doesn't always mean that you have the best uh, uh, players. Um, you know, you may have the best players and, you know, and here's a, here's a comment right here about Eddie Jackson getting hurt. Eddie Jackson, one of the best players in, in, that, that I can remember at Alabama, you know, he, he, he gets hurt, um, you know, and, and, and all of a sudden now you're without him. And, th- and that was a big weakness on the team, uh, that year that Eddie Jackson got hurt, you know, and you, you have to have luck as well. Um, look at this year's squad compared to last year. Uh, I'm a, and I've talked about this with Kyle Henderson on here a lot, on and off the air. I'm just a huge, huge Tua fan. Still love him. You know, even watch him with the Dolphins. That was one of the reasons why I wanted to do that. That show that J.P. Shadrick and I did where we kind of highlighted Alabama players in the NFL. Because I just pay attention to Tua now, you know, and and, and watch whatever the Dolphins are doing. I'm going to keep an eye. If he gets traded, I'll be a fan of, of him and his team, uh, you know, no matter what. But – uh, but, you know, at the same time, it's like he gets hurt last year and then, you know, you, you get, guys kept getting hurt all the time. This year, Jalen Waddle got hurt on a freak play. You know, Landon Dickerson got hurt on, on a weird play. But there really wasn't a lot of big injuries. 
And I think that the strength and conditioning program that Alabama has was one of the reasons why um, part of it's luck. But, you know, when you if you're going to win a championship, you've got to have those things. You know, what if what if Devontae Smith had hurt his his um, finger and, and it wasn't with Alabama up big in the national championship game and they didn't have him or Waddle? Um, you know, who's going to be, you know, the guy that steps up and, and helps Alabama get past some of these other teams that they beat easily because of Smitty and what he was able to do? All right, I'm going back into the comments, and if you guys want to get in on the conversation, up oh, I got a call here. Let's go back to the phone lines and talk a little bit of Alabama football. Where are you calling from, and who is this? Hey, mate, what's going on? What's up? Is this Dean? This is Dean. What's going on, bud? Brandon Dean, former Alabama player and, uh, of course, one of the great coaches at USM Wright, where you guys are uh, – you got like an Alabama dynasty going over there. Uh, but I think the big news is that you won the uh, the fantasy NASCAR uh, championship from last year. I saw the presentation today, so great, congratulations! I appreciate. It. Yeah, we uh, you know, we got a little league going on here, and Mike Johnson won it last year and presented me the trophy tonight. Uh, we're just kind of sitting here and holding right now, uh, watching Daytona 500. But thought we'd uh, give you a call in, kind of give you an update on that. Yeah, rain's we- clear and. and um, you know, hopefully we'll go back racing here in an hour or so. Well, that's great. Talk, let's talk about what you see with Alabama and the recruiting class that they had this year. For a guy that has spent, you know, his life around the game of football, they have here on Rival said that it's the, the highest rated recruiting class that Alabama's ever had. I know that you probably don't recognize all these guys, but do you recognize any of the guys that went to Alabama and, and your thoughts on this recruiting class? Well, Everything you look at, you know, they, they say that it's uh, one of the top rated classes ever. And, you know, you, you kind of look at every position and I, I pretty much think that uh, I, don't, I don't see any position that, that they are lacking at as far as across the board in the national conversation. And, you know, it's kind of the old sum of the risky getting richer. And it's, it's pretty amazing to see what, what's going on right now and, and the, you know, good saving that staff. and just the, the turnover and everything that continues to happen is progressing in a positive nature. It's, it's really amazing to see. And just the talent that's in the state of Alabama and, you know, really around the southeast and that Alabama's getting all of those guys to, to come to Tuscaloosa is pretty incredible. When you played at Alabama, compare it to the game of football right now, what we see. You know, I was talking to Mike about this. You, you know, they said, hey, you know, the 09 team compared to this last team. And he's like, well, what style of football are we playing? You know, how's the game progressed from the time that you were playing to, you know, what we're looking at now, what you're coaching now? Well, obviously, back when, back when I played and even, even you know, in Mike, Mike's years, um, you know, it was more pretty much traditional high formation. You're going to be understanding you're going to have a fullback. <clears throat> you know, you're going to run the football first and and set up play action off of that. But now it's, it's kind of turned into the opposite. You're going to throw the football and, and run the football after you throw it. And just see the way the game has evolved and, and um, you know, the way that, the way that Coach Saban, and we've heard it from every, every angle, the way that he's also evolved and, and taken – his recruiting and, and the way that his coaching style is the, today's game is what's kept Alabama in, you know, national spotlight and winning the championships. And it's night and day from back when I played to what it is now. And you see that translated down to the high school, high school game as well. You know, a lot of teams now are trying to do that, but you've also got to have those guys that they can execute those plays uh, to be able to, to be successful in that type of uh, style of game as well. Alabama looking to repeat as national champions, but they're going to have a brand new offense. You're know, talking about Bryce Young and Paul Tyson and Jalen Milrow and new offensive linemen and new receivers. You know, you've been through this too, you know, being a, a high school coach where you guys have won uh, titles and, and won a lot of them. How difficult is dealing with this player, this new player, you know, this, this new kid, you know, on how to step in and, and handle the role of 
you know, almost inheriting someone else's success and getting them to perform, to play on and off the field at that same level. How tough is this job going to be for Nick Saban? Well, the major key, obviously, every year, and I think you look at Alabama last year and you look at Alabama from, the, from what they did this past year, you know, a month ago, it's all about team chemistry. And if you don't have chemistry and you don't have everybody pulling for each other and, you know, you can, you can have talent in spots, but if, if you don't have a, a team and, a, you know, a team that is legitimately pulling for each other, then it's hard, it's hard to win games. It's hard to win those games that when you got to dig down deep and, and be together and account, you know, be, be accountable to each other. And I think that that's, I think that's what Alabama was successful upon this year. And I think that <clears throat> whether it be high school, college, or, you know, even looking at the pro game, when you don't have um, good teammates and you're not a, a team, then that's when you're not going to win the game. And I think that credit to, you know, Coach Saban and, and what they've been able to do is this past year with all the uncertainty surrounding the season and, and loss of time together, they made it work. And I think that's a sign of a true leader. No doubt about it. Brandon Dean joining us on the phone, former Alabama player. Uh, Brandon, I try to tell people all the time on here um, about what things were like before Alabama was in this incredible dynasty type role, just to appreciate what we're dealing with right now, what we're looking at when Alabama is winning against Tennessee 14 straight years and causing Auburn to fire their coaches when even though the guy's a pretty good coach. Um, when you talk to people and you say, Hey, you know what? I've been a Bama fan a long time. How do you describe the dynasty that's taking place right now? And will we ever see anything like this again? <laughs> well, it, it's, you really can't put it into words, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, back, you know, my freshman year was 2000 coming off of an SC championship, um, in 1999, and then going into 2000, right number three in the country, starting off with, you know, you go in, into that season and you think that everything's roses, you know. And then, you know, what happened after that? Four head coaches in four years through my career. And then, uh, you know, Mike and those guys come in there under Coach Sheila. And then, you know, he got fired. And then Coach Saban comes in. And, you know, it, it was it was touch and go whether he was going to be the head coach at all or not as well. But once he came in there and he established, you know, his program and and the way that he was going to run things, now it's, it's set up to be what it is. But, you know, if you, if you look and Rich Rodriguez would have come in there, there's no telling where Alabama football would be right now. And <laughs> yeah, I think it's, you it know, you, you can't really put it into words. <laughs> it wouldn't be very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not like um, this. I mean, this is uh, crazy, man. And I, and I think that's why you just, you just got to sit back and appreciate the moment and just take in, take take it in and enjoy it. And because there's no telling if it'll ever happen again. And you know, because Bryant retired, you know, back in the early '80s, nobody ever thought that this would happen again, but it did. But you know, it also took 30 years. So. It's just something that I think everybody needs to enjoy and appreciate and, and you know, just 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 have fun with it. Brandon Deans, our guest, as we talked to you on a Sunday night, coaches at US, UMS, and uh, they do a lot of good winning over there. State championships also played at Alabama. Um, all right, let me ask you this, this final question. When you see players in high school that – you know, do, do you have to have someone else come up and say, hey, look, this guy's uh, going to go D1, this guy's going to go D2, or do you automatically see when someone's on your team or one of the teams that you're playing where there's just standout talent? And what do you look for in those players? You know, like if, if there's someone the that, that like a TJ Yeldon who played at Daphne, you know, somebody that's just really good, how long does it take for you to kind of look and go, okay, yeah, this guy's going to be, not only he's going to play D1, but he's going to be good at it. Well, you know, kind of this day and age, and especially when you're talking about Alabama type talent, you know, that, that talent jumps off the film as soon as you turn it on. Um, 
Now, there's also guys that that you think they they can potentially be Division One talent, and you know you don't really know until you play them. And then a lot of, a lot of times after we play them, you know we say that that kid actually has a chance to be a, a big time Division One guy. But typically, when you're talking about you know Alabama types or uh, you know top tier SEC talent. It's, it's pretty evident, you know, as soon as you turn to come on this, that we've got to we've got to have a plan for this guy and and uh, you know be able to do some things against him and get him out of out of their game plan, and uh, especially you know like I said with Alabama, Florida, the, those type of things, LSU, and we play a bunch of those every year, and you know just just kind of seeing the difference that, that those guys are compared to the talent level of others is you know it's pretty night and day, and that's why. That's why, I'm, you know, the top tier of the SEC is what it is. Well, Brandon, I appreciate you jumping on with us, man, and talking a little football tonight. Who's going to win the NASCAR race? Well, hopefully we'll get it started again. And I uh, figure once we get it started again, Chase Elliott probably take the checkers. Well, let's, let's hope he's the champion from last year, right? That's right. You know, he, he won it last year, won the championship last year. He hadn't won the 500 yet, but hopefully uh, we can pull him through here tonight. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for calling in. We'll talk to you soon. Roll Tide. Appreciate it, bud. Roll Tide. Great call there. Brandon Dean played football at Alabama. He was back in my day, man. I mean, like, I, I remember those teams. I remember them well. I, I, 2000 uh, to 2004, you know, he's dealing with coaches getting fired all the time and everything else. Remember that 1999, they almost won the – you know, they won the SEC and they could have possibly – gotten to the national championship had they not lost to Louisiana Tech. They lost to a really good Tennessee team. They lost to Louisiana Tech. And then in the bowl game, they lost a 21-point lead to Tom Brady in Michigan, Tom Brady's last college football game. So how crazy was that? Alabama had Sean Alexander and uh, Chris Samuels, and and, and um, uh, Michigan had this guy named Tom Brady. And we were all like, who's this dude? Hey, turned out to be a pretty good football player. All right, guys. Well, look, it has been – I know. Let me put this up here, uh, LT. Yeah, NASCAR has been on all day. It's been on all day because they had like the the start of NASCAR. I was curious to see, you know, Michael Jordan's got a car in there now. Um, you know, just just what was going to happen in this year's race. And then they've, they've had rain. They got started. They had this giant wreck and then they had rain. So they still haven't ran uh, the Daytona uh, 500 yet. But I think that's that's going to come up tonight. Anyway, look, guys, appreciate you hanging out on a Sunday night. We'll come back next Sunday. We'll make this a, a regular thing like we used to do during the season. I had to have some time off, man. Look, I wanted to watch the the college, the, the NFL playoffs, and, and boy, was it worth it, right? The Super Bowl turned out to be memorable. You know, the, the championship games were great. You know, a lot of big-time stars this year. And uh, the same guy that got us in that 2000 Orange Bowl got everybody else again this year for that national uh, championship or actually the Super Bowl championship. So that's a world title, right? Uh, don't forget that tomorrow night, 6 o'clock, we're going to have Monday Night Quarterback. That's when um, – Trey Yannity, our uh, super uh, intern, and Tony Sukos, the Bama Insider beat writer, are going to hang out with us, and we're going to talk. Kyle Henderson and Andrew Bone will be on Tuesday night. That'll be another 6 o'clock show. And all the breaking news as it comes down the pipeline will be available at BamaInsider.com. So make sure you check out that site. And, you know, what, what, what I got to remind you guys of, is that we really appreciate you hanging out with us. Thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. We love you guys. You're, we're closing in on 50,000 subscribers, and it's because of you guys. Um, what's crazy is that, you know, when I started doing this, I, I basically just wanted to have this platform for my tailgate show, which is our Alabama football pregame show. And then I realized, like, hey, we're having a lot of fun over here doing digital media. Um, and there's a lot of different people that are on digital media that can get on and, and host the show, whether they have, um, you know, a lot of, of Alabama background or maybe there's someone that really doesn't have any. They just jump on and talk. 
Uh, I can tell you this, that we pride ourselves here at the Alabama Rival site and Bama Insider, uh, Kyle Henderson, Andrew Bone, our entire crew, on trying to get things right and trying to be, um, you know, legitimate news sources for you. And you guys make it all worth it. So thanks on this Sunday night for hanging out. Thumbs up and subscribe. I'm Mick Gillespie. We'll talk to you again tomorrow night, Monday Night Quarterback at 6 o'clock.